How's it going everyone, this is Tom over RedmondPie.com. I have today a comparison for you between the original iPad mini on the top, the iPad mini with retina display in the middle, and then the iPad Air on the bottom. We're going to be comparing the physical aspects of all these devices, and then of course how they perform. Let's just start off with the physical dimensions then. The iPad mini retina and the iPad mini first generation are pretty much exactly the same size, only one slight difference, and we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, it is a 7.9 inch screen diagonally from corner to corner. Corner. So you're getting almost an 8 inch screen, uh, able for one handed usage, and then the iPad Air, obviously a 9.7 inch screen, a much larger screen real estate. Both resolutions are 2048 by 1536, both in retina territory, the iPad Air has a pixel density of 264 ppi, whereas the iPad mini retina, 326 pixels per inch, and then the original iPad mini with 1024 by 768 at 163 pixels per inch. So talking about the slight difference between the iPad mini with retina display and the original iPad mini, that difference is actually 0.001 inch in thickness. The iPad mini retina display is 0.29 inches in thickness and the iPad mini original is 0.28 inches. The iPad Air is actually exactly the same thickness as the iPad mini with retina display and this thickness, the difference between the iPad Air and the mini with retina display uh, to the original iPad mini is barely even noticeable whatsoever. You're not going to have to be bothered about it. And just for comparison, here we have the iPad Air on the left next to my HTC One on the right, so you can just kind of consolidate how thin uh, these tablets actually are. The original iPad Mini comes in at 308 grams, the iPad Mini with Retina display 331 grams, and the iPad Air at 469 grams. Obviously there is a jump from the iPad Mini Retina display to the iPad Air in weight, but it's not even that huge, and I personally am not bothered by the extra addition in weight uh, on either of these upgrades. Next up we're going to be running Geekbench 3. This kind of gives you a system overview about how well your processor and general system performance is on your specific device. I started these all at the same time, uh, the iPad Air on the left, the iPad mini with retina display in the middle and then the iPad mini original on the right. Uh, the iPad Air was ever so slightly quicker than the mini 2. Both of these two iPads are rocking Apple's A7 chip, a chip based on 64-bit architecture. Uh, the iPad Air scores 1478 and that's a single core performance with a multi core performance of 2692. The iPad mini retina slightly lower at 1395 on a single core performance and then 2521 on a multi core performance. And the difference in score here can be attributed to the fact that the iPad Air is actually clocked at 1.39 gigahertz, whereas the iPad mini with retina display is clocked at 1.29, so 100 megahertz less. I don't know why that is, that's just obviously Apple's inclusion, maybe to improve battery life or something like that. I'm actually just going to go ahead and skip ahead here, the iPad mini, the original iPad mini actually took over a minute and a half to complete this benchmark. Uh, it's pretty crazy how big the performance upgrade is to the iPad mini 2, uh, with 263 single core performance and 496 multi-core. This benchmark indicates that the iPad mini with retina display is five times more powerful. Next up we're using webkit.org's SunSpider benchmark. This actually tests JavaScript rendering in the browser. Uh, we're using Safari and it's all private so you won't be having any cache or cookie errors. Uh, interestingly the iPad mini was actually first to kind of initiate the test uh, but then after that the iPad Air just pretty much tears away with this one as you can see. Uh, it's counting down, it goes to one and then you'll get a result. It presents you with a time of how long it actually took to uh, render or complete the benchmark. Mark, uh, so the lower score the better here. And as the iPad Air is almost done, there we go, it'll hit the 1 and then refresh onto the uh, uh, results screen and the iPad Air scores 384 milliseconds, the iPad mini retina display slightly behind at 414 milliseconds, but then the iPad uh, mini original 1291 milliseconds, so again quite a lot slower. Next up some browser tests, we're going to load up richwiz.com, this is my personal uh, website as you can see so and then we're going to press go at the same time again this is done in private browsing so uh, no cookies or cache will affect the results so the iPad Air was just first and then followed by the iPad minis uh, at roughly the same time which is actually quite surprising next up redmondpie.com uh, this is a you'll see the result here is probably a little bit more predictable uh, we get a nice fan of the iPad Air finishing, the iPad mini retina finishing, and then the iPad mini uh, standard, the first generation finishing. It's a little bit more predictable there. And then finally, we're going to load up uh, the NewYorkTimes.com, uh, NYTimes.com here. Press go at the same time, and you'll see that we get the iPad Air again, loads first on the left. Uh, the iPad mini, retina, and then the iPad mini on the right. So again, quite a predictable result. 
And then finally we're going to finish up with a gaming comparison. This is Riptide GP2, quite a uh, intensive 3D rendering game. So this is the iPad mini with Retina display. Uh, it looks absolutely gorgeous, definitely the best out of the three with the highest pixel density. Of course very high frame rates, no lag whatsoever uh, to speak of at all really. Everything is very fluid and a fantastic experience. The same goes for the iPad Air. This still, again, looks absolutely fantastic. It is a Retina display with a 264 uh, PPI. And again, no lag uh, to speak of whatsoever. A fantastic, consistent high frame rate with probably the most powerful CPU out of the three. And then we get to the iPad Mini. You'll notice that the general experience is okay, uh, but it is a little bit laggy. You're getting the occasional drop frame here, and it definitely doesn't look as good considering uh, the lower, much lower resolution uh, display that this actually is housing. You're not going to be playing many intense games uh, like this one. This is particularly intense, but if you are looking for a solid gaming experience, the Retina Mini is definitely the way to go. There we have it guys, that pretty much wraps up this comparison. If we take anything away from this is that the Retina Mini is a very, very quick machine and definitely competes with the iPad Air. It's also an extremely good upgrade from the iPad Mini in terms of performance at least and also that beautiful high resolution display. If you have enjoyed or found this video helpful, definitely drop it a like, subscribe to the Redmond Pie YouTube channel so you don't miss future content just like this one and I will catch you next time.